<laughs> right, Fiona, he's, he's over to you. I'll just share our screen now and a very warm welcome to you all for the Ash Wednesday service. Yeah, welcome to everyone joining us in Zoom. Welcome to everyone joining us on Facebook. And welcome to everyone who will be watching this at some point in the future. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. Just, just bear with me one second, just sharing the computer sound. Right, we're there. We're all good. So we're going to start by singing Just As I Am. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Ash Wednesday isn't a time for thinking about the things that we've done wrong, so that we can think that we're bad people. It's remembering that God created us from goodness and for goodness. And we get to question why. Why, when we're created good, do we sometimes not act kindly or even create space in the world for unkindness to happen? Today isn't about thinking that one day we'll die so that we can be sad. 
knowing that we will die should help us to see how we should live. And we don't remember these things on our own. We remember together as a community because we don't live our lives alone. We live them together, although it might not feel that way currently. And we apologise together in this service for all those times that we chose something that wasn't loving, that wasn't kind, and when we forgot that we aren't alone, when we forgot that not only do we belong to each other, but to God. Today, we recognise together our good and bad choices. Today, we recognise we're capable of amazing beauty if we choose to live lives based in love like holy soil nurturing the things it grows in we grow in love and Lent begins today 40 days and nights to take us up until Easter 40 days and nights when we get the opportunity to think about the best way to live in the world the best way to use our gift of a life so we take time this evening a tiny snapshot of time to stop and to remember and to think of our amazing capacity to love and to live kind and beautiful and flourishing lives. Now, before the service, I put a few messages out to um, ask you if you could have a candle and a match to hand to light that candle. If you don't, that's OK. This is something that we can use later in our service but I would invite you now to light your candle, but to save your match somewhere safe for later in the service. Ooh, mine just jumped. <laughs> so I'm gonna light my candle. But I'm just gonna keep my match for later. And if you have a candle and can do the same, that would be great. If you've got a candle, but have a lighter to light it with, that's okay, we can work with that as well. Um, so we'll just set that aside and we'll use that later. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And we say together, holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin and through the death of your son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Then each of them went home while Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. 
and making her stand before all of them. They said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, sir. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way. And from now on, do not sin again. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We'll now have a, a sermon by Bishop Marsh, Mark Ashcroft. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. These sombre words are the words spoken over us in the ceremony of ashing on Ash Wednesday. We won't be able to do our ashing in quite the same way uh, this year, whether it's in church or out on the streets. But the words remain a powerful reminder of our own mortality. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Of course, this year we don't need any reminding of our mortality. It's been shouted at us from the rooftops. I don't know whether you remember that in March last year when uh, we uh, heard that maybe uh, 10 people had died from COVID-19, we were all shocked and horrified by it. Now, of course, those numbers come in the hundreds every single day. And behind each uh, number, there is a name, somebody who's known, somebody who's loved, somebody who's precious to God. Brothers, sisters, parents, children, grandchildren, friends, relatives, partners, colleagues, all of them are special to us. And they leave behind those many people, brothers and sisters, who are grieving and traumatized. We don't need any reminder of our own mortality and the sting of death. Just as we were created from dust, we know that to dust we shall return. Death that has been a taboo subject for us haunts us all. It is indeed the last enemy. That sense of the frailty of our bodies helps us to live each day in the light of eternity. And I think that's what Jesus was referring to in this gospel passage where he says, Do not stir up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but stir up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That is, all that we strive for in this world in terms of wealth and possessions, status, power and influence, we're going to leave behind one day. So Jesus tells us to store up treasures in heaven, those things that last forever for all eternity. And that brings us to the second sentence in the ashing ceremony. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. The great theologian Thomas Aquinas in Two Precepts of Charity, written in 1273, said that there are three things that are necessary for our salvation. We need to know what we ought to believe. We need to know what we ought to desire. And we need to know 
what we ought to do. In other words, turning our, uh, away from sin involves the renewal and change of our minds, our desires and our actions. Or repentance means a change in our heads, in our hearts and in our hands. I find that a really helpful thought and maybe this Lent we can focus not so much on disciplining ourselves like giving up chocolate or chips or beer or bacon but focus instead on living for eternity. So what might that look like? Well let's take Thomas Aquinas's lead. It means first of all taking time to renew our minds or renew our understanding and we do that I think as we gaze into the face of God who is love. And how we see God in his love will be different for different people. For some, it will be through our worship, others through nature, again, others through scripture, through the stories of Jesus that we see and his great love for us. Through others, it will be through art or beauty. And yet for others, it will be simply in the stillness of silence. But whatever the method, we take time to put away the noise and the rush of our busy world and contemplate God. God in his love, God in his holiness, God in his glory. And as we do so, our minds and our understanding are transformed. And they're not easy to change. And what we're doing is allowing the Holy Spirit uh, to change and renew our understanding and if it's hard to change our minds, then changing our desires is probably even harder. This is what Jesus was talking about, changing our desires, I think, when he talked about treasure, what we deeply desire, what we deeply value. That's our treasure, isn't it? And in the prayer book, uh, it talks about following too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. That's the problem when our focus is on our wants, our desires, what suits me. I love Charlie Mackesy's book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. And the mole has a bit of a running joke, doesn't he, about his desire for cake. And we can all identify uh, with that. But when the mole asks the boy what he wants to be when he grows up, the boy replies, to be kind. When our desires are to be kind, to be faithful, to be loving, to be generous, to be thoughtful, to be patient, then we're not far from the kingdom of God because these desires are inspired by the Holy Spirit. They are the fruit of the Spirit. And what we are trying to do in Lent is not only to renew our minds, but to re renew our desires so that they're focused on becoming uh, like the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We want our desires to be shaped and directed by the Holy Spirit and not by our selfish wants and desires. The third area that Thomas Aquinas talks about uh, for renewal and repentance is our actions, what we do, what we do, the work of our hands and includes probably what we say. And those three elements, our minds, our hearts, our desires and our actions all coalesce together. And I find that it's um, probably when we begin to do kind actions that we become kind people. Those habits of kindness, and patience, goodness and love are not going to be embedded our, in our lives just by thinking about it. But as we recognise God's kindness, as we change our mindset and as we put things into practice, actions into practice, we find that starting small learning from one another and encouraging ourselves and each other, we can become kind people as we allow the spirit to change our actions and our desires. And in all of this, we're not only being invited to turn away from the flawed devices and desires of our own hearts, but we're invited to turn to somebody, to be faithful to Christ. We turn to the one who journeyed to death for us. That's what we remember during Lent. We uh, turn to the one who died on the cross where all our sins and flaws and mistakes were dealt with. We turn to the one who conquered death as he rose from the grave. 
and we turn uh, to him because our deepest desire is to become like him, like him in his death and resurrection, like him in our character and our disposition. He is the one true treasure, for in him we find life in all its fullness and life for all eternity. So during this Lent, may you focus on the things that last for eternity. May you find Christ afresh. May your head and your heart and your hands be renewed and refreshed. And may you remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Amen. I uh, apologise that Bishop Mark was frozen there, but I'd, I'd like to thank him very much for providing our reflection this evening. And so we turn to our traditional Ash Wednesday liturgy of penitence. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity of love, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbours, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favourably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection.
and we say together, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So what I invite you to do now is to take your match or um, if you don't have a match but you have a candle then you can blow your candle out and use the ash from your candle wick. We wanted a way that we can um, that we can receive ashes in our current situation and this is one one way that we thought might work. So if you break the head off your match and crumble the ash into the palm of your hand between your finger and your thumb. You should be able to make a, a reasonable bit of ash there, just enough, enough for your own forehead. I'll just give you a moment to, to do that. I'm nice and ashy now. I only had a little match. And so dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. God, our Father, you created us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And I invite you to make a cross with ash on your own forehead. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we'll now join together and sing, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer.
this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son. He is the sacrifice for our sins. That we might live through him. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, everybody. You got an impressive cross, you.